I'm just getting started with learning game development. I previously spent around a week learning the basic features of Godot and making a few different prototypes to learn the engine a bit better, but I hadn't completed a full project yet. So for my first unique project, I decided I wanted to pick something pretty small in scope so that I could actually get it done and release it. So for some reason, the idea that immediately popped into my head was making a rainbow scratch paper simulator. <laughs> rainbow scratch paper is very nostalgic for me. It's basically just a rainbow piece of paper covered up by a layer of black material that you can scratch off to reveal the underlying rainbow and you can make fun drawings with it. Little did I know going into it that this project would actually be a bit more complex than I was originally thinking, but I would also learn a lot more than I was planning as well. So this was my five day journey of creating a rainbow scratch art simulator in Godot and everything I learned along the way. Day one, I started out by thinking about how I wanted to generate the rainbow texture that would be the base of this whole project. Since I wanted the rainbow pattern to be unique for every drawing, I knew I wanted to use noise to get values and then set the rainbow colors based on that noise. And to get a nice rainbow range of colors to choose from on a gradient, I decided to try to use the math that is already existing that hue sliders use in HSV color pickers. So I was thinking about how I could actually implement this in Godot, and I realized that using a shader seemed like a really fitting method because I wanted to go through every pixel in a texture and set the color. So I had never written shader code before, and I went to Godot's website and I went through their first tutorial on creating a 2D shader and then I created the Rainbow Scratch Paper project. I was then able to figure out how to pass a noise texture into my shader and then set the colors of the pixels in the color rect based on that noise texture. And then I was able to use a HSV to RGB function I found on Godot shaders to simply pass in my noise value, which ranged from zero to one, any location in the texture and get back a RGB value for the rainbow color at that coordinate and it gave me a nice looking gradient. <laughs> I was pretty happy with this and I just spent some time tweaking my noise to make the rainbow look a bit more like I wanted it to. And I also made it so that it would generate a unique texture every time you reloaded the game. So now I had the rainbow texture working, but I needed to implement probably the most important part of the project. And that is the actual drawing mechanic that exposes the rainbow texture underneath. To do this, I first made another color rect, this time black and the same size as the rainbow paper. My thought was that this new layer would have a separate shader on top of it that would tell it whether the pixel should be transparent or not based on some other texture that the user is drawing to that I'm using as a mask. Godot has a built-in draw method that you can use to draw arbitrary shapes to the screen, so I knew I could use that to draw brush strokes, but I wasn't sure how to actually draw to a texture that I could read from in my shader. To do this, I ended up using a sub viewport and adding the drawing script there so that the user would draw to that sub viewport, and then I pulled the textures from the sub viewport in my new shader for this black layer and just set the transparency of each pixel in this black layer based on whether the user had drawn to that location. And then it worked. I was able to draw rainbows. Finally. <laughs> That was difficult. And I just spent some time making the drawings look a bit better because the mouse can move faster than the frame, so you can end up with gaps in your drawings. So I fixed that up and made things just a bit smoother. Yes, it's working. And then I was able to make a first drawing. This day I had a bit less time to work on this project and I just kind of messed it around with my drawing code and I realized that it was very inefficient. For some reason the sub viewport I was using to draw the mass texture was clearing itself every frame despite being set to clear mode never and requiring me to redraw every circle every frame and as you drew a ton on the screen that was a lot and it would create lag. What was happening is that I had a color rect within my sub viewport that I had attached the drawing script to and it turned Turns out the color from that color rect was getting drawn to the screen every frame, effectively clearing out all of my brush strokes and requiring me to redraw them every frame. So once I removed that color rect and attached the script a different way, it worked fine and it had no more lag. I guess that's the problem. <laughs> I decided things would look more fun if it seemed like the scratch paper was on a wooden desk. So I found a wooden desk texture and I scaled down the scratch paper so it seems like it's sitting there. But once I did that, my shaders were no longer working correctly. When I was drawing, it was completely off position and that's because I didn't really understand how sub viewports were working. I was having problems because previously the sub viewport was the same size as the screen and the same size as both the paper layers as well. So and they had the same coordinates, the same scale. After way too long of being stuck here, I finally realized 
case, all I had to do was set the size of the sub viewport to be the same as the rainbow paper when the game loaded. And I also had to switch the mouse position in my drawing code to be based on the local coordinates within the rainbow paper instead of on the global coordinates of the window. This ended up being a pretty simple fix, but it took me a long time to figure out what was going wrong because I really just wasn't used to the different coordinate systems, things like that. But I think I understand things a bit better now. Next, I started thinking about how to implement the black paper shavings as you draw. I first spent some time looking at Godot's particle system, but I realized it wouldn't really work for what I wanted because I wanted the particles to stick around indefinitely and also have some physics to them so that you could push them away to clear off the paper. So I created my own small black particles that were just rigid bodies with collision shaped 2Ds attached. And I had them spawn as the player draws on the screen at random offsets and at slightly random sizes as well to give things variety. Here I ran into a kind of funny bug where if I changed the size of one particle, they would all change. What? And it turns out this is because they were all using the same underlying mesh and without making that unique, it wouldn't work. So I did fix that by making the mesh unique to each particle, but that didn't seem very efficient. So I looked into it a bit more and it turns out I could just change the scale of the particle instead of directly changing the size of the mesh. And then I wouldn't have to make them unique. At this point, I wasn't sure how many particles I could spawn without the game starting to lag, but it seemed to be working for now. So I decided to roll with it. Then I wanted to add the ability to clear the particles from the screen so you could actually see your drawing. So I added a method on right click that just kind of explodes the particles away from your mouse. Then I improved the dust background a bit with some nicer looking wood that had a normal map for lighting. And I also added some basic sound effects for drawing and blowing away particles. Good enough for today. I was now getting to the point where this project was feeling almost complete, but I had a bunch more polishing I wanted to do. I spent some time experimenting with lighting to improve how the desk texture under the paper looked. And I also spent some time experimenting with adding a normal map to the actual black scratch paper texture to make it look a bit more 3D. And I had to convert it to a mesh for that to work, but I decided ultimately to not keep that because it didn't really fit. I then wanted to add a slight shadow to the paper to make it look a bit more 3D and I spent too much time overthinking how to do this before I realized I could just use a UI panel and lower the opacity and turn it black and put it underneath the paper and it looked effectively like a shadow. I also just for fun experimented with some full screen shaders that I found on Godot shaders and some were a bit too much, let's say. But I ended up leaving a slight green effect because I thought it made things look a bit more textured and a bit more interesting. I was then realizing that there were some performance issues if I spawned a ton of particles. So I wanted to address that. And to do that, I decided I would just start shrinking particles as there were too many on screen. And then once they shrink down to zero, I would just remove them from the game. So I implemented that logic. Now I wanted a way to actually reset the drawing to start another one. So I added a button that cleared the canvas and all the particles. And then I started experimenting with improving the drawing sound effect and making the pitch and volume based on how the player is actually moving the mouse across the canvas. This was the final day of development and my main focus was on improving and polishing everything I'd already implemented. I did start the day though by doing something fun and just seeing if I could draw an arbitrary texture to the texture mask. Pretty cool. Then I went to work on further improving the drawing sound. This took a lot of experimenting, but I think I did improve things a lot and I am happy where it turned out. It really feels like it's based on how you're moving across the canvas. I then set out to improve the logic around spawning the scratch particles. At this point, if you're just moving really, really slowly, a ton of particles will spawn because you're technically moving and every frame of spawning more particles when you're drawing. So that didn't feel right. It was also not good for performance. So I just made it so that particles wouldn't spawn if you were moving at a slow speed. I also previously had implemented logic where if the player is moving fast while drawing, it would spawn more particles, but that was kind of not working the best because it ended up just spawning big clumps of particles at the final location of their mouse stroke. So I wanted to improve that. So I wrote some code to instead spawn those excess particles along the mouse stroke from the previous location to the current location, and it looked a lot better. And then finally, I wanted to make it so that if you draw on areas that are already rainbow, so there's nothing black to scratch off, it wouldn't generate particles. I spent some time thinking about how to do this. It seemed kind of tricky, but it ended up not being that bad, I realized I could just grab the image of the current drawing mass texture from the sub viewport. And then when the user draws, I can just check to see if the color of the pixel at the current mouse location is already red, which means it's already been drawn to. And if so, I don't spawn any particles. That was easier than I thought. I think we're done.
So that's it. That was the whole journey making this project. If you want to test it out, it's up on itch.io and I'll have the link in the description. This project might seem small and it kind of is, but I feel like I learned a lot more than I was expecting and I'm just really happy with how it turned out. I think I now have a much better understanding of shaders or at least how to get started learning more complicated things with shaders and viewports and just Godot in general. Let me know what other small projects you'd like to see me experiment with. I am thinking of my next one as we speak, so I'd love to hear your suggestions. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.